A pericardiocentesis is a procedure to remove fluid from the pericardium with the primary goal of alleviating the elevated pressure. And the secondary goal is to avoid damaging any vital structures in the process. Depending on your practice location, the pericardiocentesis may be performed by different types of providers, such as an interventional cardiologist, an emergency room physician, or a cardiovascular surgeon. It's always preferred to perform the procedure in a controlled, sterile environment by an experienced team. But in an emergency situation, pericardiocentesis can be life-saving. So let's learn how it's done. If available, ultrasound guidance is key to a successful procedure as you can directly visualize the needle entering the pericardial space. Prepare your supplies including a spinal needle or pericardiocentesis needle with a stylet in place, a 10 milliliter syringe, a three-way stopcock, chlorhexidine or other sterilizing scrub, local anesthetic in a small syringe with a needle, a sterile drape, and tubing connected to a collection bag for collecting the fluid. If using an ultrasound, first use the probe to find the pericardial space. The standard approach for pericardiocentesis is subxiphoid. After locating the xiphoid process, sterilize the area with chlorhexidine or whatever is standard in your practice, and use local anesthesia such as lidocaine to numb the anticipated path of the needle. The approach is immediately below the xiphoid process, aiming the needle toward the patient's left shoulder and inserting it at a 45 degree angle to the skin. Insert the spinal or pericardiocentesis needle with the stylet in place. Once the skin is punctured, remove the stylet and attach a three-way stopcock and syringe. Then, under ultrasound guidance, advance the needle towards the left shoulder while gently aspirating continuously with the syringe. When the needle punctures the pericardium and passes into the pericardial space, the syringe will begin to fill with fluid. Withdraw fluid into the syringe. With even a small amount of fluid removal, hemodynamics will often improve. It is sometimes recommended that if you are performing this procedure emergently and you have an experienced provider on the way, you can remove 50 milliliters of fluid or just enough to improve the hypotension and then stop to wait for the experienced provider in order to reduce the risk of complications. Removal of fluid addresses the immediate need to reduce the pressure. But don't forget, this is a diagnostic as well as therapeutic procedure. Any fluid specimen should be evaluated for diagnostic clues. The most important test to perform Include cell count to examine the number of red and white blood cells in the fluid, gram stain to identify any bacteria, acid fast staining to look for tuberculosis, hematocrit to identify whether the effusion is bloody, and cultures to see if any bacteria grow from the fluid. Other tests to evaluate for transudative versus exudative effusion include lactate dehydrogenase, total protein, and glucose. In general, Transudative effusions are pressure phenomena due to excess volume, like in the case of renal failure with missed dialysis sessions. Exudative effusions, on the other hand, indicate an inflammatory, infectious, or malignant process causing the effusion. A brief side note here. Pericardiocentesis is indicated for cardiac tamponade. It is not routinely recommended to drain pericardial effusions if the patient is stable. There are many ways the pericardial space can cause trouble, so there needs to be an important therapeutic reason to enter that space. Pericardiocentesis, for diagnostic reasons, is rare, and every attempt should be made to reach a diagnosis with alternate testing. There is a reason this procedure is only done by an experienced provider or in a life-threatening emergency. The complication rate is 5 to 40% and includes serious things like puncturing a coronary artery, pneumothorax, inducing arrhythmia, or puncturing nearby structures like the liver or stomach. An experienced provider will remove all the pericardial fluid and then exchange the needle for a pericardial drain to provide continuous drainage under observation in case the effusion recurs acutely. Join me in the next MedMastery lesson 
to learn how to manage a pericardial drain. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.